What's up, everybody? It's Davin Jackson, also known as DJAX, here from Alpha Cybersecurity, and I'm here to present day 14 of TriHackMe's Advent in Cyber event. Before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to TriHackMe for asking me to be a part of this. I'm super honored and super excited to be doing this alongside some great people in the industry, and most importantly, helping people get familiar with cybersecurity uh, right in time for Christmas. So before we get started, please remember to like this video, comment in the section below, and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, let's get right into the story. So today's challenge is going to focus on the CICD and why it's great, but more importantly, what happens when it's not configured properly. So let's get right into it. Okay, so now that we have our challenge up, let's get right into the story. It says McDev, the head of the dev team, sends an alarming email stating that uh, they're unable to update the best festival company's external web application. And without this update, no one can be able to see the company's plan. The dev team has been working on a CI CD server to automatically push out updates, but that server has been compromised and we need to gain access back to that server. So the learning objectives are one, to understand what the CI CD is, two, understand the risks associated with CI CD, and three, understand uh, the exploits and attack vectors when it comes to CI CD. So first, what is CI CD? CI CD is known as continuous integration and continuous delivery or continuous deployment, depending on uh, you know what software development team you're on, but those, are, those terms are interchangeable. Uh, the integration is a process of software source code being put in a central repository like a GitHub to avoid multiple versions of that software being out. So this way you can only make changes to that one central repository. The CD or continuous delivery or continuous deployment is the process of making sure that that code is always being pushed automatically to pre-production and production environments. This way it makes the code more reliable uh, when it's done this way. So it says CI CD should be considered as a set of practices that are put in place to enable development teams to make changes to test their code and deploy the application more reliably. And you should think of CI CD as a continuous process or loop that includes steps in the software development process. So now let's get into the risks associated with CI CD. The CI CD approach may be an effective way to mitigate risks that may result from manually aggregating changes made to the code or manually testing them or manually deploying updated versions of that application. However, the risks associated should be taken into consideration. Uh, as a pen tester, the goals of this is to find and uncover different weaknesses in the automation process and look for certain things like uh, issues with file permissions, configuration errors, um, issues in the automation software, uh, it can be issues with uh, their access security, uh, does the user have too many permissions, uh, is certain things out of out of date or unpatched? Are there any type of hard coded uh, passwords or API keys in the source code? And uh, different, different things like that. Okay, so it says here that the Grinch has put his own version of the CICD pipeline in place and he's using bash scripts and scheduled jobs to automate processes. So if we go ahead and start our machine, which we already did, and we bring up our attack machine, Let's go ahead and see what happens when we visit his website. So if we open up, let's open up a couple terminals first. So there's one and that will be our second one. So we'll, we'll get to these in a second. But now let's open up our web browser and let's browse to 10.10.103 dot 95 and if we go here it says waiting for loot somewhere else but this works so looks like this is just the only thing that's here there doesn't seem to be any source code or anything it's just a picture of this Grinch here this really ugly guy so we'll just go ahead and minimize this and we'll open up our terminal and we'll run derb and we're gonna point our directory brute forcer to 10.10.103.95 and we're gonna let that run and see what comes up. And the first thing you see here is an admin page. So we're gonna let this continue to run. We're gonna go back to our browser and let's see what, what's on this admin page. So we hit admin and it looks like there is a little iframe box here and there are four text documents so there's 
definitely or def not test not test test and test dot two so let's see what else we can see so we're going to minimize this looks like our derb scan is done and there is admin index html server status and where's so i think we're, we're going to stay focused on the admin page but let's go ahead and ssh into our target machine So if we hit SSH and we have our, we already have a user known as McSkitty and we go to 10.10.103.95, it's going to ask us if we're sure that we're continuing and then it's going to ask us for our password, which we type in password one and we're in. So now that we're into the server, let's see if we can look around and find anything interesting that we can use to um, our advantage. So the first thing we do, uh, we check what directory we're in and we see we're in the home directory of McSkitty. So let's back up a couple and now we're just back in the home directory and now let's see what's out there. And you see there are four users, McSkitty, Pepper, the Grinch and Ubuntu. Um, I think we're interested in the Grinch so let's go see what's going on in his folder now if we hit LS there's a desktop there's loot and then there's a scripts folder again we're interested in the scripts folder so let's navigate there and now if we hit LS there are four scripts it looks like there's a check script cleanup loot and test sh however if we look a little further we'll be able to see uh, what permissions each of these files have and it looks like loot.sh has read write access for everybody so let's look real quick at what's going on with loot.sh and as you can see this is the script that's being used on that admin uh, iframe the admin page that iframe box that was in the admin page uh, so it looks like it's listing that everything from that loot file and it's pushing it out to the web server. But since it's readable and writable, let's see what happens if we make some changes to it. Let's see, for example, what happens if we ask it to display the Etsy shadow file. So let's go to vim loot.sh. And you see here, this is bin bash and there's our command. So let's set it to edit. And we're gonna delete all of this here. And then we're gonna say cat Etsy shadow. And we're gonna save our file. And now let's go back to our admin page. And you see here we have the information that we're looking for. So you see we have the Grinch's username and password here, McSkitty, and we have Pepper. So now that we have um, the username and hashes for all of our users, let's just go ahead and just copy that somewhere. So we're just going to hit copy. And actually, we'll go here and we will open up another terminal and let's just hold on to this for a second so we'll say vim hashes.txt we'll edit and we will now save okay so we'll hold on to that so now that we know we can definitely make changes to this Let's see what else we can do with the Grinch's account. So we're minimize this again. Now let's look around a little bit. Let's see if we back up a little. Let's see what happens. Can we look into the Grinch's desktop? Yes, we can. And there is a flag.txt. Now let's see if we normally try to access that. It'll tell us that our permissions are denied because obviously we're not the Grinch. But using that same vulnerability that we just used, let's go back to 
let's go back to our scripts folder and we're back at our loot.sh so if we hit vim again and loot.sh now let's tell it to let's tell it to read us that file so home the Grinch desktop flag.txt we're gonna go ahead and save it and we're gonna go back to our browser and we're going to back up and then we're gonna hit the admin page again and there's our flag and I agree 100% Die Hard is the best Christmas movie I'm not sure if I can say the line because I don't want to get in trouble but um, that's our challenge so let's just read the lessons learned the CICD simulation aimed to help so, uh, help showcase major types of vulnerabilities that are often seen in CICD automation a locally installed Jenkins application can have an unpatched component deployed for various operational reasons. However, it is rare that a critical vulnerability remains unpatched for an extended period of time on infrastructure managed, managed by a cloud service provider such as Amazon, Azure, or Google. This is the main reason you will more often see vulnerabilities being a result of improper access management or lax account of privileges or logic flaws. So let's go ahead and answer some of our questions. Um, how many pages did the derb scan find? So if we go back to the beginning, our derb scan found four directories. And then how many scripts did we find in the Grinch's folder? That was also four scripts. Then the next question says, what are the five characters following uh, the dollar sign six dollar sign G and peppers password hash so what we'll do is we'll just open up that hashes document that we made earlier and we'll look for the user pepper and there's dollar sign six dollar sign G so that looks like Z U P four two so Z U P four two and finally what is the content of the flag dot uh, txt file on the Grinch's users desktop and we go back to our browser and it was Die Hard is the best movie. So we'll just go ahead and copy this over. And we will hit paste. And we will hit submit. And just like that, we have completed day 14 of Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber. Okay, so to recap, uh, we learned about what the CICD pipeline is. We learned about the vulnerabilities or risks associated to it. Uh, and we learned about what happens when it's not configured properly. We then went into our web application and saw that there was an iframe that was pushing out a, a bash script for listing documents or listing items. Uh, we went in there, saw that that um, document or that script was actually very vulnerable because it was open to everybody to make changes to we then grabbed some password hashes and finally we were able to grab the file from the Grinch's desktop that we wouldn't have been able to get to um, under normal circumstances all right so that was day 14 of try hack me's app in a cyber challenge we're more than halfway there remember it's 25 days of challenges and every time you complete one it betters your chances to be eligible for one of those prizes that you see on the main screen. So I hope you guys are doing it and following along, making yourself eligible for those prizes, as well as uh, learning some cybersecurity stuff along the way. I have been your host, Davin Jackson. Again, thank you to Try Hack Me for the opportunity for being the presenter for today. And if you liked what you saw, please like the video, comment in the section below, uh, click the bell for notifications and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys later. Take care.